Hey everybody, welcome to the Dice Tower live streaming Q&A. It is June 12th, 2017. We're doing it in a different room today. This is Dice Tower Studio B. We really need to name these studios. This obviously is not finished studio, but we were shooting in here Thursday, Friday. So we are going to be, as soon as we're done with our live stream, I'm doing a Q&A today. And then I'm also doing an Origins preview. As soon as I'm done with both of those, then I'm going to be packing everything up because we're leaving for Origins tomorrow morning. So a lot of stuff going on. So if you have any Q&As, just go ahead and ask them in the, uh, in the comments and I'll try to get to as many questions as I can. Remember, there's an FAQ in the links in the description. So if you want to uh, see, you know, if you wonder why your question might not be answered, it might be there. All right, so. <sighs> We're ready to go. It's going to be an interesting uh, uh, week. We're doing a lot of live stuff starting on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We got a few videos going up tomorrow. Um, but we're working on everything, trying to make it better. If you notice, we have a new uh, board game breakfast logo, which I really like, um, that came up this week. And, um, well, it's been a weekend, huh? I've been doing a lot of stuff with my family. Got to play some games with them. Um, so let's see if we have any questions now. The, um, there are, sometimes we outsource some of our graphics work. Most of it is uh, Derek putting it together. The intro you saw for this Q&A is something I outsourced, but Derek does a lot of the new intros, a lot of the, if you notice, there's a lot of uh, graphical stuff happening in our videos lately, that's all Derek. Um, <laughs> what's my favorite non-flicking dexterity game? Uh, probably... Super Rhino. What? It was like I was ready for your question. So weird. Um, any top 10 videos with Sam and Z soon? Well, we just did one last week. Our top five exciting experiences in gaming. If you have not watched that list, that is by far one of the coolest top 10s we've ever done. There were some really great stories that came out of that one. I really liked it. Um... The FAQ link is broken. All right, well, I'll have to fix that later. I can't fix it now. I apologize. What games are you looking forward to seeing on a table at Origins that you haven't seen in person yet? Probably War Eternal, or I think it's called um, Immortals now from Queen Games. We'll be playing that one live, actually, on Saturday. Um, is Rising Sun going to be as good as Blood Rage? I think Rising Sun is better than Blood Rage, but I'll need to play it some more to find out. Um, can you explain LCGs to me? We bought Arkham Heart LCG and I don't quite understand the card collecting building part. Well, an LCG is called a living card game. You buy the base set and usually that's enough, not always, but usually that's enough to play the game. So you play through the game and then if you want more cards, you can buy them, but they're not randomized. Um, you buy them in packs. They usually come out with a pack monthly. Now, interestingly enough, I saw someone online complaining and saying that they cost as much as collectible card games. I don't think they do. If you have to have everything, a collectible card game is much more. Um, I don't think LCGs are cheap by any means, um, but I don't think that a collectible card game is, is cheaper. I mean, you have to buy and find rare cards. With an LCG, you can get everything. You could argue and say that, for example, Magic comes out. Is it quarterly they have a new set and LCGs have a new pack every month, but that one pack a month is not as much as the people who buy several boxes of Magic cards um, quarterly. Um, before we went to the UK Game Expo, y'all had some games you were excited to play. Are you going to do a back talk about those or can you speak about a game you liked? Um, oh, I see what you're saying about the ones that we played there. I didn't play hardly any games at UK Games Expo except for near and far. I played many, many, many times. Um, but we will uh, do a, probably not normally, we just do the reviews on them. Um, will Jason be at WBC convention? I don't know, that's something you'll have to ask him. I don't think he's planning to be there. What is the most important lesson that you've learned since starting the Dice Tower? Um, That's a really good question, and I'm not really sure how to answer it, so I'm not going to. I apologize. I mean, I've learned lots of lessons in my life. I don't know which one would be the most important from starting the Dice Tower. Um, 
I guess I never know what people are going to like or not. Are you planning to continue the live gaming at least once a week? No, we're planning to do the live gaming when we can get to it. It will not be once a week because sometimes it's just weeks are too busy to get things done. Um, what's your favorite Buffy Big Bad or better yet, rank them? I've actually never watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Well, I watched the movie and I watched a show or two. I watched a musical one and stuff, but I really don't know much about Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I was never really that interested in it, and I know that's anathema to people who love it. Um, now I fear as each year goes by that I will dislike it more if I go back just because it's hard to get into the bad special effects. Who's all on the Origins crew? Well, there's me, Sam, Z, Eric, um, Rob Oren, Rob Geislinger, uh, Joe Stedman will be there, Mark Street, um, Mark Slinsky will be floating around, I'm sure. Um, Mike Parkinson, um, did I say Derek? Because I can't forget Derek. Um, and there's a few others that I am missing on, out on, but I have a list somewhere. Do you still think Century Spice Road is a splendor killer? Well, I still think they're guilty, yes. Is the Vassal Law broken, perhaps? We all agree that Dune is unique and Rex is an abomination. Well, I feel pretty confident that not everyone agrees that Rex is an abomination. In fact, it's very far from an abomination. It's fine. Does the Dune theme fit the, the, the game better? Of course, but Rex is fine game. I mean, it's the same game. They, in fact, they streamlined. In fact, I would rather have the Rex gameplay with the Dune theme because the things they changed in Rex were much better. That being said, um, I don't, it doesn't break the Vassal Law because I have a caveat that well, I'm not counting games you can't get the IPs for, and the Herbert Foundation is not allowing people to make board games with the Dune theming, so that's impossible. So there's that. Any idea when we will see Eric's new Top 100? Probably in the summer, probably a little bit later. What are your thoughts on fidget spinners? I hate them. Um, uh, Partial, for two reasons. I mean, one, they're a fad, but I don't care about fads. Fad, fad, it's going to go away. They're going to be gone by the end of the year. But I find that the fidget spinner, whether or not they help kids or people or not, they might, they might not. I'm not going to argue either way. But I will tell you, a fidget spinner might make you fidget less, but they're extremely distracting for everybody around you. Um, Tom, you gave the Oregon Trail a 1.5, but Phase 10 a 1. Do you think that's really fair? You're right. Unfortunately, I really can't rank things lower than a 1. So it's not fair that Phase 10 got a 1. I would probably have preferred to give it a 0, but 0 is not really a rating on the scale. Um... Would you rather deal with toilet trouble or trouble with a real toilet? Why is that even a question? <laughs> um, what do you think about the way FFG is handling distribution for Star Wars Destiny? Well, I know it's selling greater than that they were able to anticipate, so they're having difficulty getting it out there. I don't know that that's, it's their fault that the game is so popular. Um, but I have seen it at stores and such. I've been at various stores and seen it for sale there. So I don't think the distribution is that bad. Um, we're bringing a three-year-old to the Dice Tower Cruise. What was Jimmy's favorite thing to do on or off the ship? Probably eat, play in a hotel room. He had a good time. My wife took him to the little kids area sometimes. He would probably like that more this year. How do you choose your contributors? Well, I, they email me and we talk about it. There's various ways that we get into that. Um, and anyone who ever wants to be a contributor, email me, and I usually call and talk to people who are contributors to the show. Um, how far in advance do you need to reserve hotels for conventions like Origins and Gen Con? Very far, actually. Um, sometimes rooms open up before the things, but I am thinking about hotel rooms usually a year before the convention. More expansions for Nothing Personal coming? I don't know. If there is any more expansions for Nothing Personal coming, they will not have the name Tom Vassal on them. That's all I can say. Um, Game Sleuth says they're going to put out more expansions, but I'm not, I'm not involved with that at all. I really don't own the rights to my own game, honestly.
What do you think about the new expansion for Dead of Winter that combines the two games? Would you buy it? You know, as a consumer, I don't think I would. Um, I'm sure it's fine, and it will be exciting to combine the two and have two teams, but that's just too much for me. I already think Dead of Winter is a pretty lengthy, long game as it is, and to add in, I mean, I really feel like the two sets of Dead of Winter have so much stuff in them. There's so much involved that I really don't see that I need more stuff for them. Um, but as a reviewer, of course, we'll check it out. Maybe it will be amazing. But as a consumer, just based on the information, probably not. An idea about naming your studio, have sponsors name the room? Well, they would have to pay us a lot of money to get their name on a room. Um, or donors to the Jack Vass Memorial Fund can name them. Um, it's an interesting idea. I guess we could put that in as a stretch goal in the next uh, Dice Tower. Um, cauliflower recipe of choice. I really, I'm partial to fried cauliflower a lot, right? It's really good. It's, uh, I'm not a big fan of fried vegetables, mostly, with the exception of, well, pickles are not a vegetable, but fried pickles are great. Fried mushrooms are amazing, and fried cauliflower, I could just eat that till it comes home. Now, I know fried food's not good for you. So, steamed cauliflower, just straight steamed cauliflower with a little bit of pepper salt, maybe some other spices on it. It's amazing. I could eat that all day long. That's really my favorite, just straight up cauliflower. I really like it. But it's got to be done right. A little bit of butter maybe, but not much else. When will you review load, says Orin. And thanks for saying hi at UK Games Expo. I'm curious if there's a decent game behind the minis. Well, do you like rum and bones? Because load essentially just took the game wholesale and they made a few changes for the worse. It's not a horrible game, but it's definitely like a lesser version of rum and bones. I'll be reviewing it the week after Origins, probably. I haven't been able to keep up with you guys as much lately. Why had Jason cooled down on as many videos as the end? Well, you, Jason did two videos last week, two reviews. He did one of Secret Hitler and one of the new Star Wars Destiny set. Um, he's been really busy at work lately. So he won't be at Origins, and he'll barely be at Dice Tower Con because of that. Um... Can I get the Sam and Z guys for Rum and Bones and Blood Rage from you all? Well, eventually you'll be able to get them from us. Currently, all that we have are packed up and we'll be heading towards Origins. What am I currently reading? I'm currently reading uh, the Advice and Consent series by Alan Drury. It's a political book fiction that was written almost 60 years ago. Um, the first one, Advice and Consent, is the best of the lot, but I do enjoy all of them. They do tend to hit the same notes over and over and over again, but there's a lot of really fun characters in them. And I'm finally in the final book, although I'm in one of the two final books, because at the, in his penultimate book of this series, he, he had a major event happen that caused the timeline to split. So if this person, something happened to this person, then the one book happened, and if something happened to this person, the other book happened. One book is a terrible book of bad endings, and the other book is a marvelous book of good endings. Oh, actually, not even marvelous. It's hopeful endings. So I'm currently reading them again. I've read them before, but I like them, and I'm rereading them. Um, I have not played the new Attack of the Titans board game. What's your favorite game that was ruined by expansions? I don't think a game is ever ruined by expansions, because happily, I never have to play an expansion if I don't like it. Um, how much work is left on a new place? Well, mostly this room is what's left. Um, and this is going to take a lot of timing and a lot of planning to set this up. And because we have three conventions in a row, it's just not going to happen. How do you like your steak done? Medium, probably. In fact, my wife and I had steak yesterday, and I chose medium. She chose medium rare, but I think medium rare might be just a bit too rare for me. I used to, when I was a kid, my dad liked steaks well done, like well done. And so growing up, I thought that was the proper way to eat a steak, right? And I'm still not opposed to eating a steak well done. But then I, I learned that people like did this faint, you know, if you, oh, you like a steak well done, you like a steak with steak sauce, you're horrible. Very pretentious stuff. Um, but because I was eating out with publishers and things more often and I get to invite it to meals, and then they'd be like, you need to eat your, your steak not well done. Okay, so I'll get medium well done. 
and now I've come around to getting it medium. So it's, it's, it's gone down, but I think medium is exactly where I want it. Um, have you played, let's see, isn't a fidget spinner like rolling dice? Well, it is, and in fact, I backed a fidget spinner dice thing to use for that. But when I'm rolling dice, I'm not sitting there rolling, 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 rolling in front of people all the time long. That's what the fidget spinner is to me. Again, if you like fidget spinners and you have a fidget spinner, that's fantastic. I'm not going to snap, slap them out of your hand or anything. Um, it's just something I'm not a big fan of. Will Melody be doing her top 100 before she goes to college? Yes, although she's not going to college for a year. Um... How do you transport your gear when traveling? Well, I carry all the really expensive stuff, so I carry all the cameras with me, and then we put the rest in baggage and tell them it's fragile and hope and pray that it makes it there. We bought really good suitcases. Samsonite suitcases are amazing. And we're gonna pack it up as best as we can, and, but what can you do? The cameras are the most important part, so they always go in a carry-on with me. Um, how do you feel about the increase in disposable games? It's fine. I really expected you to say even Phase 10 deserves a 2. At least it has some replay and folks aren't dumped immediately from the game. Yes, but if replay is similar to being slapped for an hour, I'm not sure I would want to replay it. I mean, at least um, in Oregon Trail, you are mercifully released from the terribleness that is the game. Uh, and with Phase 10, you are stuck playing it. Are there any significant reasons to play above and below before, near, and far? No, they're very different games. You don't need to play one before the other. What do I think about the whole map thing that's minimum advertised price? I don't know. Um, I know that the, the general reaction, right, is it's a bad thing. You know, you look at it, you say it's bad. It's bad for me. I want to pay more. Um, but... The problem is it's hard to look at these things sometimes from an unbiased perspective. Because most of the time we look at these things as a consumer. Like, oh, it's bad for me. I don't like it. Terrible. I hate you. You know, you hate consumers. But there are a lot of things that have a minimum advertised price that I enjoy. I mean, the Apple computer, um, my Sonos speakers, they all have minimum advertised pricing. And I do like them. I wish they were cheaper, but that doesn't stop me from buying them because they're quality products. So a minimum advertised price definitely does put a seal of quality on it. Now, I think some publishers have no business doing that, um, and I think it's going to bite some publishers, and I think, it's, I think I don't like it, the minimum advertised price, but I can see reasons that they do it. You know, it's not fun when people are taking your game and selling them for pennies over the cost of the game, and that devalues the game as a whole, and you have a hard time selling the game and making any money. You have to sell a whole ton of games to make any money at all. With a minimum advertised price, you can sell fewer games and make more money. And you say, well, yeah, but then you'll sell fewer games. Yeah, but not that fewer. You know, for example, let's just take some basic math. Let's say the game costs you $20 to make, and someone's out there selling it for $22. Well, if you sell 1,000 games, you make $2,000. That's not a lot of money. But if you have a minimum advertised price of 40 on it, well, then there's a $20 per game. And if you sell 100 of those, that's $2,000. You're not going to sell just 100 with that upper price. You're not going to sell that many more with the pennies over a dollar thing. So I can see why companies do it. I'm not defending the whole thing. I don't know enough about economics to really give a good reason on it. I ask lots of publishers about it, and hopefully I'll be able to give a good, thorough answer at some point. But I will say that it's being done by a lot of things. I've asked a lot of people. Some people hate it. Some people like it a lot. Obviously, the consumers like you and me, we don't, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, do you find that Champions of Midgar become samey or repetitive after multiple plays, considered buying it but heard this criticism? I don't think it does, but I'll tell you what, with the new expansions, it will never become samey or repetitive. Those expansions are amazing. Um... Have I heard any developments on the P 
Pillars of the Earth reprint. I know that's coming this year, maybe. I'm coming to Dice Tower Con this year from Australia. Any board game packing tips on how to get all the board games I want to order from Cool Stuff back? Well, bring as little as you can. Have your suitcase ready. Be ready to pay for an extra suitcase. That's what I would do when I lived in Korea. I used to pay for extra suitcases because that extra suitcase jammed full of games, 50 pounds of games or whatever you're allowed to take, is definitely cheaper than shipping them back yourself. Is Super Rhino significantly better than Rhino Hero? They're the same game. Um, what is my least favorite trend in board games in the past year? Um, I don't know. My least favorite trend. There's probably something, but I'll have to think about it. Small question. Having watched you guys for a while now, as soon as the game seems to hit a satanic in theme, you guys seem to sink the game real fast. Shouldn't we leave religion out of the gaming industry? I don't believe religion is in the gaming industry. Um, but to be more specific, I think you mean Christianity. I'm a Christian. Um, I'm a Christian, and that infects my whole life. So if I play a game where it has themes that are diametrically opposed to my worldview as a Christian, I'm going to mention that in my reviews. I apologize if that offends people, but at the same time, if you disagree with me on that subject, I would hope that you can see that in the review and say, well, I'm different, so therefore I will like or dislike the game. I cannot say that I'm going to ignore things in a game that are diametrically opposed to my worldview. I just cannot do that. I don't know that I will ever say that a game that's amazing with a theme that I dislike, I'm going to say that it's a horrible game. No, I'm going to say the game is fine, but I dislike the theme. To do otherwise would be a betrayal to what I believe in and a betrayal to you because you're here to watch my opinions. If you're here just to get an objective view of the game, then you're at the wrong channel, honestly. Um... They canceled distribution for Star Wars Destiny. The amounts out will be the last of it starting in the new year. They started bringing out a single box that with Destiny boosters. Sales out will be gone. I don't actually understand that. But if you're saying they only have a certain amount of it that they're going to sell each year, I do know that, right? They said for each set, Fantasy Flight said they're going to have a certain amount. They're going to sell it, and then it will be gone. Each year, they'll have a starter set, um, like a basic set, and then they'll have an expansion, I think, one each year, and then when they sell it, they're gone. That is what Magic the Gathering does also. So I think that the, the, the policy is sound. I mean, if they print a ton of it, you, if you want it, you can get it. If you want to get it years later, well, you can't. Do I like that philosophy? I don't know. I'm just saying it works for wizards. Am I a fan of Pennsylvania Dutch whoopie pies? They're okay. I know you're a big fan of Final Fantasy. Have you heard of the Final Fantasy trading card game? I have it. I just have not played it yet. I opened it up, read the rules. I was really annoyed because it was one of those rule books where you have to hold the sheet out like this. It doesn't look good from initial uh, looking at it. I hope it's good, but I haven't played it yet. What items do you order when you order Chinese? I try to pick something different every time because I like different types of food. So I just pick something on the menu I haven't had yet. It's James from Sydney, Australia. If a big convention started in Australia, would you come over to check it out? Well, possibly. It's very expensive and a lot of time to fly to Australia. So it would have to be financially worth our while to go to one of these. People want us to come to conventions all the time, all over the world, and that's fantastic and fun. But the Dice Tower's job is to actually review games. And so we are already going to, I think, 10 conventions a year. That's 10 weeks, per se, of our year out of 52, one-fifth of our year at a convention. And that's already crams into the time that it takes to review things. Um, I have to buy tickets for Origins, maybe, but you better hurry up. I mean, Origins is this week, starting Wednesday. Um, have you read anything by R.L. Salvatore? I've read the Star Wars stuff that he has done, and I think that's probably it. How did you feel about the new Wonder Woman movie? I really liked it a lot. 
Can I get your opinion on the Goblin King Super Rare from Marvel? I'm assuming you mean Dice Masters, and how just how competitive he can be. I think it's Goblin King, Marvel. I, I think you're talking about Marvel, Dice Masters. If there's legendaries that are super competitive, I just don't care. I, I don't play the game competitively, so I don't really care. As a content creator, how do you take the negative criticisms and trolls? I find it discouraging sometimes. Yeah, it can be discouraging. There's a couple things. First of all, if you can't take the heat, you got to stay out of the kitchen, right? Um, if, if, if you can't handle it, you probably shouldn't do it because you're going to get that criticism. Secondly, uh, I found that conventions is always a very positive thing. I meet people at conventions. Very rarely does someone come up to me and tell me how horrible I am at a convention, although I welcome it. Come, we'll talk. I'd love to talk to one of these people face to face. It just never happens. Um, but for the most part, um, conventions are very affirming. And there are going to be people who are affirming too. If you read the positive comments, and that, that can be really useful and helpful. Um, and then, for the most part, most, many of the trolls, and I'm not saying all because there are people with legitimate complaints, but there are people out there who are going to say bad things no matter what you do. They're going to say negative things, and I uh, just don't have a time to give those people time of day, honestly. All right, so I can see that I am about 14 minutes behind in questions, so let's zoom up. Uh, did I watch The West Wing? Yes, I enjoy The West Wing a lot. Um, it's a bit of a utopian thing sometimes. Uh, you know, everyone in, the, in it is very, very, very perfect. Um, but it is a lot of fun to watch. I just like political stuff in general. Whether I agree with it or disagree with it, I like to watch it. Um... It's the 1st of February, 2018. Dice Tower Fundraiser just finished and raised $10 million. <laughs> what would you spend it on? Well, if I had $10 million, which I will not, I would actually really, this would be a full-fledged studio. We'd have overhead lighting. We'd have monitors. I would have, that would be the first thing I would do. I'd also hire more people because I like having more people around. And I'd probably stick some of it in as a nest egg so that we wouldn't have to raise funds anymore. $10 million? I could probably live off that, just off interest. That'd be pretty cool, right? We'd never have to fundraise again. That'd be really exciting. What kind of camera and sound equipment were you using when you started filming video reviews? Well, I was using the, the camera on my first I, iMac. It was a I mean, I, Mac laptop. It was a, one of those white ones. And I just used that. I just sat here, looked at it, talked about it, showed pieces. And as time went by, I eventually got a small camera and started recording in that, which was much better. Um, you know, I just used what I had. Why are you not a fan of cats? Well, there's a lot of reasons, but partially the great cat invasion of 1543. Now, you don't know about this because it didn't happen in Europe, and most of our history is known from Europe. This was a, a South American thing. And the Incan Empire is a direct result because of the cat invasion. And you might wonder and say, why is there no cat pictures in Incan sculptures and such? Because that they, we eradicated them. But they, the things that they did are so horrific. But me and Chief Sokotoa, um, we spent a lot of time in that. That's, I, really, I really don't like to talk about it much. But, you know, I went into there liking cats. But the cats were so vicious and cruel. And I suppose that it's speciesist to dislike all cats. But every time I see a cat, I remember what they did in that war. And if it wasn't for the fruit kooks, you know, coming in and saving the day, we, we could have lost Earth at that point in time. Um, how for you to consult rule books, even for games you played loads of time? All the time. All the time. You ever see the IT crowd? I have. Um, do you still like Dice Masters? I do. Was looking forward to Unfair before your review. Ouch. And reflection and seeing so many others like the game, were you having a bad day, maybe too harsh, or do you stand by your review? I always find it's interesting that when I give a negative review to a game, people are like, were you having a bad day? Not realizing that I usually record like eight reviews in the same day. So if I was having a bad day, was I just having a bad day reviewing that one game? Or maybe you think, did I have a bad day when I played the game? But again, I play a whole bunch of games in a row, so... Why would that game stand out? I don't really care what other people say about a game. If everyone likes a game but me, I might go, 
hmm, am I missing something? But for the most part, I just don't care. Um, I like to talk about games, and I don't like a game, I'm going to say so. And I, yeah, I didn't like Unfair that much, and that's okay. If other people like it, fantastic. I'm thrilled that people like the game. I just didn't. Um, you said you wouldn't play this War of Mine board game again. Would you play Freedom of the Underground Railroad again? Yeah, I would. I don't know why, but Freedom of the Underground Railroad can have a happy ending. I'm not sure this War of Mine will. Um, how many hats are going to Origins with you? Probably four. What do you think of FFG coming back to a collectible economic model with Star Wars Destiny? After they embraced the LCG format for years, I think they wanted to make money. With much love of near and far, how much of each mode have you played thus far? I played through the entire campaign, um, and I played through more than half of the character version. Looks like Tom is an interrogation room. Well, no, they have, they have stark white walls. This, this wall is too nice to be in an interrogation room. Do you still love Dice Masters or Destiny Kill It? You didn't watch my review. Um, do you sleeve your cards sometimes? Um, in your opinion, who's the toughest mastermind legendary? My vote is Apocalypse. Have yet to fight Galactus, though. Well, there you go. <laughs> Galactus, probably. Um, wow, there's so many Star Wars Destiny questions. Guys, I barely play the game anymore. I let Jason have that one. I thought the game was okay, it was fine, it wasn't amazing to me, and I have no desire to keep playing it. I love Dice Masters, there you go. Um, my friends all play with regular playing cards all the time. Can you suggest one or two games to lure them away from the classics? Go watch our top 10 trick-taking games and use some of those. That's usually the best way to get people who play classical card games to play other things. Um, let's see here. How many years did I live in Korea? I lived there for almost 10 years. What's my favorite lawn game? Well, that's a good question. I guess bocce. Probably. Not a big fan of croquet. It's okay, but I really like bocce. Lawn darts are okay. I'm going to go bocce. Um, favorite flavor of potato chips? Pickle. Um, can you tell what to expect for the cruise? Plug it. Oh, yes, of course. I'm always going to plug the Dice Tower Cruise because I really want people to come on it. Um, but, you know, people keep talking. I, I, I talk to people about the cruise all the time. The thing about the cruise that amazes me is when people are like, oh, it's really expensive. But when you pay for the cruise, you're done. You get to the cruise. You've paid for your, your lodging. You've paid for them, you know, taking you anywhere. Like, they'll take you right to a city in Mexico. You can get out and walk around. I mean, you can pay and do stuff there, but you don't have to. You can just get out and walk around your food, and you can eat as much food as you want. So the thing about the, the, the cruise is that it's so cost effective. You like literally can go over the ship and do all kinds of things. You go see a show, you don't have to get a ticket, you don't have to pay for a ticket, you just go see the show. You wanna come play games in our game area, you don't have to pay for them, you just go play games. Not to mention, you'll get a couple games in your gift bag when you come in, and that is gonna be pretty cool right there. We gave out like, 50 to 100 hours worth of stuff last year. So it's a really cost-effective trip. It is so much fun. The chance to just spend time with other gamers on the ship, or if you need to get away from them, just go lay on the deck or go swimming, see a couple things in Mexico, and just absolutely gorgeous weather. I cannot tell you how nice the Florida and Caribbeans are in December. It's just gorgeous and beautiful. It's not too hot, but you can go swimming if you want to. It's an absolutely fantastic time. You really should consider a Dice Tower Cruise. I love that there's always a large candle burning in the back during gameplays. Well, not here. 
But yes, those are Yankee candles. I'm a big fan of Yankee candles. I'm a big fan of candles that smell good. If my, my favorite flavored Yankee candle is, is currently um, key lime vanilla. Uh, I really like that one. I tend to like anything that smells like cooking, sugar cookies. I like a lot of the Christmas smells. I also like fruit flavored smells. There was a Macintosh apple one that I really liked sometime. I tried different ones. You know, sometimes I'm not a big fan of them. Uh, there was a root beer one one time. They had a bunch of man scented candles one time where they were okay. Like there was fresh cut grass, that was not bad. Um, but for the most part, I really like them. Reese's Pieces or Reese's Peanut Butter Cups? Oh, the Peanut Butter Cups. But I'm really coming around on those Reese's Peanut Butter, those bars, I forget what they're called, but they're like Twix almost, but they're Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Those are pretty good. Um, what's my favorite Korean food? Bude Chige, for sure. Which one of your hats are you most attached to? Probably my blue fedora. Are you going to be at Origins this year? Oh my, we're going to be at Origins. Please come by our booth. We're in the middle of Hall D. But I'm going to save all that. We'll talk about that in an hour. At 10.30 today, we'll be doing a Q&A. Um, not a Q&A, but well, maybe a Q&A, but a live where I'm going to go through the Origins uh, book, uh, the, talking about the different things at Origins that will be there and just discussing that. Did UK Games Expo feel like the third largest convention? Yeah, I think it did. How would you rank the Blue Orange Kids games? Dr. Rika top that, the ice cream one. Um, gelato, what is it called? Jumpin' Gelato, I forget the name of that game now. But I like them all. I would probably put Dr. Eureka at the top still, but I do like the ice cream one a lot. Um, okay. I've not played Guild Ball. I don't, I have not got a copy of Seventh Continent. Should one bad Kickstarter experiment stop me from backing another project? Should one bad date stop you from dating? Should one bad dessert stop you from eating desserts? That's kind of the answer to that is the answer to those. Um, a board game themed wedding? Remember that your guests are probably not board gamers. So maybe a little bit of board gaming in there, maybe a little some pieces or something with a cake would be cute. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't like make it too board game themed. But maybe that's just me. Um, did the top five at UK Games Expo make you feel proud with some answers being about the direct positive impact that Ice Tower has had on their lives? I thought it was fantastic, says Gareth. Well, I agree. It was really a nice thing to hear some of that stuff there. Have you ever read the Terry Goodkind series based on the Sword of Truth? And did you like it? And did you make the mistake of watching the Legend of the Secret TV show? Well, I haven't watched the Legend of the Secret TV show, although I, I, I will at some point. Sword of Truth, I like them. But there are scenes in every book that I find incredibly uncomfortable. Also, it does seem to be like the same plot thing happens where... Um, you, uh, things get worse and worse and worse, and suddenly the main character is like, wait a minute, I can just kill everything and everybody. There's way too much torture in the books for me, honestly. I like them a lot, and I also think there's a lot of pages where they could have just said, she tortured him, and they're like, no, we're going to spend four chapters talking about exactly how she tortured him. So, not a real big fan of that. Um... My current favorite TV show, still making new episodes, probably Shark Tank. <laughs> um, are there any game subscription devices that you would recommend? No, I don't recommend subscription things yet. Maybe they'll win me over, but I can't see why you would pay to have a random game sent to you when you honestly can just go buy some cool games and pick them out yourself. Um... What are the hardest aspects of, or difficult challenges involved in the production of the Dice Tower? The hardest aspects are just getting everything done in a timely fashion and making mistakes and trying to fix the mistakes. And conventions are our hardest aspect because we are trying to prep and get things done a week before a convention and try to have 
video come out during a convention and then we come back the next week and hey, we got to do more stuff. I know you love your job, but you ever miss just collecting and playing board games for fun at a relaxed pace? No. Um, Let's see. Why do you think Cry Havoc is not talked about as much as Cyclades or Kemet? People just don't like it as much. I really like it. We'll see how the expansion affects it this year. What happened to your Apple Watch? <laughs> it broke. Um, so while I'm, I got to figure out how to get it fixed. I'm assuming I can take it back to Apple and have it fixed. I do not know how it broke. It happened on our airplane ride from UK Games Expo. I was sitting there relaxing, looked at the time, saw my watch was broken. So maybe I hit it on something. Maybe when I went to the bathroom, I bumped it. I don't know what happened, but it's broken. Um, I, I, I am now, so I went and bought a real cheap watch because I need a watch. I know some people don't need a watch, but I need a watch. I need to be able to look here anytime I want and see what time it is. Um, and so I'm testing it out to see how much I miss the Apple Watch. Right now, the thing I miss the most is how comfortable the Apple Watch band is compared to a regular watch. Uh, it's going to take a while to get used to this. But I do need to get my Apple Watch fixed. I'm going I'm to see how much it costs. If it's like super expensive, I may not do it. Um, how do you spell your Incan chief friend's name? His name, he's not an Incan chief. We were fighting with the Incas, it's, and it's spelled S O H C A H T O A, Sokotoa. Um, he's not an Incan chief. He's from the Ilamon tribe. Um, let's say a publisher comes to me and says, we want you to design a game on any subject or license. Money is no object. What game would you make? I would say, hey, here's a list of great game designers. That's what I would do. I talked to my cat about what you said, and he said your story is just a myth. Well, first of all, if your cat is talking, it's one of the 10th uh, the sect cats. Um, and I would highly recommend that, well, talk to me later if you see me somewhere because we need to deal with that. Cats should not be talking. But secondly, liar, pants on fire, fur on fire. Um, what is the best and worst of living in Florida? The best is the weather is amazing. Um, the worst is that it's far from every place else. Like you, in America, if you live somewhere, you can drive in different directions. Where we live, you can only go up. Cats tend to have a different opinion on how things really happened in 1543. I feel you're not telling the whole story. Well, I'm not telling the whole story, partially out of, you know, there might be kids watching this. I mean, some of this stuff was really gruesome. And yeah, cats may have a different opinion, but we took care of most of them anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, Brazilian barbecue house or Shady Maple Smorgasbord? Shady Maple, hands down. Um, if there's another game in the above and below series, do you think it would be called Here and There? Maybe. I wouldn't mind if they made an expansion too far, uh, near and far. That's how much I like it, though. I've not yet played Veil vale of the Wild for Mystic Veil, vale, but I probably will at some point. Um, if someone sent you a bunch of regional foods, would you do a tasting video, possibly a salmon Z? You know, I've been debating this. I wonder if people would want to watch such a thing. It's really not a board game thing, and we already get garbage when we put up videos on our channel that are not board game related. So I thought about that. Um, is anyone at the Dice Tower going to review Anachrony at some point? Maybe, but we don't have it, so that's why we haven't reviewed it. Um, when should we expect to get the premiums from the, the fundraiser? I'm still waiting to get my much anticipated Dice Tower dice. Well, I hope, I was hoping by the end of June, but it's starting to look like it might be July now. I'm still waiting on a few things to show up. Do you ever get in trouble with your dry, sarcastic sense of humor? A lot, actually, so I have to be very careful with it. Um, any news on a possible Shady Maple meetup? Um, I'm going to do that. Again, I would rather if people wait till after Dice Tower Con is over. Once Dice Tower Con is over, then I look toward the next, three, the next four conventions, which um, are Gen Con, um, Total Con. Well, Total Con, I don't need to put a lot of work into that one. Not tell you, did I say Total Con? I'm sorry. Grand Con. Grand Con, I don't need to worry about, but I need to prepare for Gen Con, Essen, and PAX Unplugged. 
So I will make those plans, but I want to get these, these three, can, well, I say these three, I just, we finished UK Games Expo. I want to get Origins and Dice Tower Con finished first. Um, Italian sausage, bratwurst, or kielbasa? Italian sausage is my favorite of the three by far. Um, what age do you get your kids to start playing games whenever they're ready? I know people never want to hear this because they're like, well, you know, what should I do? Every kid is different. What age should your kids start talking? It's different. My son is barely talking now, and he just turned three. You know, he's starting to talk now, he, but I couldn't get him to play a game last year. I had him play memory match with us last night. He kept picking the same card. I can't believe how that was like, come on. All right, how smart are you? Pick the same card. Um, but we had a lot of fun playing it. But, yeah, he kept picking the same card. Pickled potato chips, that's a thing. It is indeed. It's very similar to uh, salt and vinegar chips. Horseshoes is the best lawn game. Nah, horseshoes is very, very... Um, the thing with horseshoes is it's very skill-oriented. <laughs> and I feel like if you're really good at it, it's not fun. To, I don't know. Horseshoes is fine. I'd rather play beanbags than horseshoes. Coke or Pepsi, do not care. I really can't tell the difference between them. Um, hypothetically, if this Asmodee MAP policy turns out to hurt the hobby as a whole, how can gamers fight back? I don't think it will hurt the hobby as a whole. Again, you have so many other options to buy games. Really. So I'll fight back by just not buying their games. Buy other people's games if it bothers you. Um, do you cook? I do. If yes, what do you enjoy cooking? I like making something... Where, well, I mean, I love frying a turkey. That's probably my favorite thing to do. Um, but that's not that hard. Um, I like making stew a lot or soups, like cutting things up and putting, making soups or some sort of casserole, something where I mix things together because I'm always interested in how I can mix things together. I also like making comfort foods a lot, like really weird and interesting snacks. Korean barbecue or Texas barbecue? Thai. Vinegar or ketchup-based barbecue sauce? Ooh, probably vinegar. Um, oh, man. Let's see here. I need to fix the FAQ link in here. I apologize about that, guys. Um, can I get a free ticket to the cruise if I agree to have the first public showing of my first game during it? Um, no. Uh, we, we are you know, trying to not lose money on this cruise, so we really would like people to come, but we're going to need you to pay if possible. Um... What are you going to use that recent survey for? I'm going to be using it for some future game shows. What do you think of Logan? I thought Logan, I watched it on the airplane ride recently. It's very, very um, gory. I thought they could have done the movie with, without all the gore. I guess the gore was there to show how brutal it is. I thought Patrick Stewart played a phenomenal role there. I didn't, I feel bad his mind was going as Professor X. Really interesting. Um, character that he played there. It was, it was interesting, but it was very somber when it was over. I was like, oh, that's a pretty good movie, and I'll never watch it again. Go Go Gelato. That's what the game is called. You're right. Um, are you a fan of chess? Not really anymore. I played chess a lot as a kid. I studied it. I was like, I'm going to learn and be the best at chess, and how can I get better at chess? And after a while, I was like, oh, wow, this is like a work to get just to constantly playing and getting defeated by people and defeated by people or beating other people. I was like, oh, I want a little bit more luck in my games. And huzzah, I found them. Um, I'm doing a board game wedding, only my fiance doesn't know I recommend against that. Do you own a Fez? No, I, I don't really want a Fez, I think. I've looked at them, I've had the opportunity to buy some, and every time I'm like, ah, I just want my hats to have a brim. I like the brim. Do you think King Domino would be a good tile placement board game to engage new people into? Oh, yeah, that's really good for new people. That's for sure. Um, 
We got the butter beam sprayer from Shark Tank. I've gotten many things from Shark Tank. Um, not always are they good. Uh, I got that little smiley face scrub thing from my wife, but she said it was not as good as they said on the show. Um, I got a, uh, I got the man candles. They weren't that fantastic. I've gotten some of the foods there. I've seen sometimes I'm like, oh, that looks interesting. I've definitely gotten a few of the things. Giving criticism is not trolling. They are two different things. Oh, I agree. But some people's criticism is essentially trolling. You know, they don't criticize. They say, well, you didn't like that because you're an idiot or you're a moron or you don't do this or that. And they continue to say that. Um, and so you just learn to live with that. Sure, we can understand criticism. I, I, I can't argue and say people shouldn't criticize my videos um, when they, uh, you know, when we are criticizing in them, right? But like um, recently we did a top 10 things designers need to stop doing. A little bit tongue in cheek, but very, you know, I meant the stuff I said in it. And there were people who made counter videos or made lists on the internet about how it was wrong and they didn't even watch the video. <laughs> See, that's trolling, okay? They didn't watch it, so how can I? That's like me taking a board game and reviewing it without playing it. I know, some people think I do that, but I don't. Um, is an Australia in your home dimension, Tom? Oh, I think so. Um, when will we see Chief Sokoto as a guest host on the Dice Tower? It's not going to happen. I'm sorry. All right. Um, are you going to play Warhammer 40K 8th edition? Likely not. But we do have a copy of it, so it'll probably be Sam playing it. Um, do you have official Dice Tower paper crowns like Burger King crowns? I don't think so. Um, let's see. What's the best resource to see what you guys are doing? Probably Twitter, I guess. Twitter and Facebook are the two main things we use. Are you doing another Dice Tower Kickstarter campaign? Well, not this year. That would be uh, next year. Hey, Tom, I've been watching your Dice Master reviews. How did you fix your cards? Ours are all bent. I just bent them backwards, and they, were, they popped right into position. I just put them in a stack, put a band around them, and they were fine. Um, have you seen the new Monopoly with all the tokens, the deluxe one? I think I may have. Um, I'm jumping around here doing questions quickly so I can catch up. What's the heaviest, shh, I'm thinking type of games you enjoy playing? Maybe Feast for Odin? But I always like to talk when I'm playing games, no matter what. Is there any chance to do a video just to tell these grand stories that I'm certain are 100% and that you're not making up as you go. I, I don't really tell stories. It's historical fact. But again, see, here's the confusing thing, is that people don't realize this. I mean, everyone goes in their daily lives, and you see all these things, and you don't realize. I, mean, I mentioned the cat thing. You don't realize how that could have changed history. And it happened five times. Now, three of those times were in a different dimension. And the, the, the fifth time was reversed, so technically it never happened, but, uh, and we're not, okay, well, anyway, it can get confusing, but see, you've never heard of any of this, right? And, it, and, and when you hear it, you don't believe it, which is why I can get away with talking about a lot of it most of the time, because people don't believe me anyway, so, um, but it's very, very fortunate for you sometimes, and Chief Sokoto is a hero. Uh, you should be proud of him. I'm just lucky to have worked with him. Um... How do you manage storage for all your videos? We have a huge set of hard drives <laughs> that we keep our videos on. Have I ever been to Minnesota? I have. Do you enjoy spicy foods? Yes. Have you had Korean fire noodles? Not that spicy. Have you been paying attention to the E3 announcements? I have not. Um, but I, I usually go read like an update on all of them at the end and just kind of scan through them to see what's coming up, what's new. Um, any chance of doing a top 10 real world themed games? Uh, maybe. 
Fezes are cool. I was told specifically that they were not, and then it was shot. Um, when's the Sheriff of Nottingham expansion coming out? That is coming out at Gen Con, as far as I know. What would I rate checkers out of 10? I believe I've given it a 2. Um, we also got that smiley scrub thing from Shark Tank. Actually, it's one of the, the most successful things they've ever done. It's sold everywhere. Those people made a mint. What game does Jason dominate? I think it'd be a shorter list to list the ones he does not dominate. Bacon sandwiches or fish finger sandwiches? I don't know. I like fish sandwiches a lot. I don't know if I want fish finger sandwiches. Do you think your hats dictate the reviews you give? No. Hey, Tom, were you offered a job by a board game company while working on a dice tower? I don't, I don't think so. I've had board game companies, you know, come and basically say, how can we be involved with a dice tower? But other than that, I've never had anyone offer me a job. I guess if I ever quit the dice tower, I could probably find a job in the board game business somewhere. Um, oh, I'm catching up. I'm catching up. How much giggling happened when deciding to have Jason review Secret Hitler? No, actually, he asked to do that one specifically. He said that he thought he could give a view on it that wasn't normally given, and I thought that was a good idea. And he really liked the game, so I said, sure. Um, no giggling involved. I thought it was a really good idea. Was the new Bill and Ted game reviewed by Dice Tower ever? Yes, yeah, Sam, Sam reviewed it. Um, how beneficial do you think doing Q&As is to the Dice Tower? Well, I don't know. I, I thought people liked them. I don't... Um, What's your motivation behind doing them? I like doing them, and I thought people like watching them. <laughs> um, have you ever combined two board games together into one hybrid game? Yes, I have. Uh, back when I first was getting into the new designer games, I got Frag, which was this game walking around like a Doom-style game from uh, Steve Jackson, and we got Zombies. And I read online that someone made rules where you could combine the two, use the weapons from Frag to fight zombies, and it was a lot of fun and silliness, but neither of those games is very good, honestly. So that's when I did that. Um, what modules are your go-to modules for Cosmic Encounter? I always play with the rewards deck. Always. Always, 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 always. That's my one go-to thing. Um, is there any that I avoid? I usually avoid the, the negative event cards, whatever they're called, um, from the different symbols that show up on the, the things. Eh, they don't add that much to the game. Um, let's see. Ooh, time is up, so I better answer just a couple more questions and then end, because we got to get ready for the uh, Origins preview, which we'll be doing in a bit. If I made some coasters out of dice and sent them, would you use them? I don't know. I'd consider it. That sounds interesting. Um, how do you like your coffee? Um, in the package, undrunk. Um... How do you decide what games to bring with you to conventions? So that's a good question. I uh, see how much room I have. That's the first thing. Uh, if I don't have much room, I don't bring games. Um, and then when I do bring them, I try to bring either, I bring a mix of maybe a few games that I'm really keen on playing. I always try to bring games I think won't be at the convention in any other fashion. And then I bring a couple of my favorite convention-style games. Like to Origins, I'm bringing Magical Athlete, and I'm bringing When I Dream, and uh, Magic Maze, and um, a few other things. But anyway... I think we need to end this here because we need to get ready for the next one. So, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. Thanks so much for coming and joining me on my live Q&A. If I didn't answer your question today, I'm really sorry. By the way, I know there's a lot of questions in here where someone says, I have a blank and blank year old child. What game should I get them? And um, again, I think ages for kids are all different. And so it, I can't really help you with your specific kid. I can tell you that we do a lot of kids' reviews, so I recommend you watch those and think which one of these would be good for my kid. Anyway, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Whew. All right. Well, that was a Q&A for sure. Okay, so we got to get some origin stuff done here. Rhino here is a little more difficult, but I do like it solo. That's more fun. Hmm, these are not hard cards to do at all. All right.
Good, good, good. Good, good. I'm feeling better about this. Oh, I was supposed to move the rhino. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 